Pumpkins dominate the Halloween season. You'll be hard-pressed to find something that someone hasn't shoved pumpkin flavoring into this time of year. But before pumpkin flavoring permeated every fiber of our Halloween season, there was simply the jack-o'-lantern. Now, carving vegetables used as lanterns was a common practice around the world. The making of jack-o'-lanterns began in Ireland in the 19th century. Back then, it was a traditional staple of Samhain. Today, Halloween carries on this tradition as the holiday Samhain was its inspiration. The tradition comes with a cautionary tale, the tale of Stingy Jack. As legend has it, the whole thing started with a man named Jack. Stingy Jack, to be exact. One evening, Stingy Jack invited none other than the devil himself out for drinks. The devil obliged and had a drink with Jack. By the end of their evening, Jack, staying true to his name, asked the devil to pay for their drinks. Well, the devil had no money on him, so Jack, being a silver-tongued devil himself, convinced the actual devil to shape-shift into a coin to pay for the drinks. When the devil transformed, Jack has a change of heart. Instead of paying for the drinks, he decides to keep the coin and puts it in his pocket, the same pocket that he was carrying a silver cross in. So the devil is stuck in Jack's pocket in the shape of a coin. Obviously annoyed and trying to convince Jack to let him go, Jack agrees to free him under the conditions that the devil won't bother Jack for a year. Which, may I say, is an odd condition seeing as he invited the devil for drinks. That's just rude. And also, when Jack dies, the devil will not claim his soul. The devil agrees, and Jack promptly frees him. The next year, Jack and the devil run into each other again. The devil must not be good at learning lessons, because good old stingy Jack convinces the devil to put himself in yet another compromising situation. Jack persuades the devil to climb up a tree and fetch him a fruit. As soon as the devil reaches the fruit, Jack carves a cross into the trunk of the tree. The devil is stuck like a cat. Assuming after he let out a huge, annoyed sigh, he asks Jack to let him down. Jack agreed, under the condition that the devil doesn't bother him for ten years. The devil agrees, probably reassessing his life choices that landed him outsmarted twice by the same person. So Jack carved again on the tree to remove the cross. The devil got down and went on his way. Years later, when Stingy Jack finally died, he was met at the pearly gates with a resounding nope and sent right to Hell's gates. When he arrives, the devil himself comes to reject him from eternal damnation, because damn it if he isn't a man of his word. The devil sends Jack on his way to eternally walk the earth in a purgatory-like state. But before he leaves, he gives him a carved turnip with a burning coal inside to light his way and because weird parting gifts. Stingy Jack has been roaming the earth this way ever since. To ward off unwanted visitors or wandering negative spirits like Stingy Jack, people would carve jack-o'-lanterns out of beets, turnips, or potatoes. The figure that walked endlessly in the night began to be known as Jack of the Lantern, which was later shortened to Jack-o'-lantern. The name was then given to the carved-out turnips, beets, or potatoes. When the Irish migrated to America, they brought their traditions with them including the carving of jack-o'-lanterns. They soon discovered that pumpkins were perfect for carving, and that is how we ended up with the less terrifying version of jack-o'-lanterns. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, and if you want more content similar to this, please check out my channel. And if you want, you can even subscribe. If you already are subscribed, thanks for your support. If you want to follow me on social media, the links are going to be in the description below. Happy Halloween!